Hello everybody! I am Jen with Slugfest Games and today I'm going to run some painting time. Uh, as you can tell from this bobbing section here in the center of the, uh, the broadcast, I'm wearing a camera on my chest and it's, uh, it is all so that I can do things with a model here in this space, and you should be able to see it. I noticed that uh, I should probably go into the laptop camera settings and configure the video. Hmm. Sound is working for it. For Jeff, but not not mysterious Kodo. That's not great. Hmm. Okay, we have two two sound on, one sound off. Okay. Let's see here. Hmm. So it looks like. I tried this previously and tested out the camera and found a setting where I could change the focus on it. Oh, you know what? This is the wrong camera. Cancel. Derp. Ah, good, good. Got to chill. Shout out in chat. Who has painted minis before? Who has not? Who's got some experience? Who's like... What is this exotic new thing where you put paint on plastic? And I'm gonna... Ah, there we go. Put... Put... Print. Okay. Cool. Zoomed! Enhanced! Yes! Absolutely. I'm pretty happy to have that actually looking well. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be alright, I think. Yeah, I think it's a good focus. Excellent. So, Let's see. We've got some folks returning to painting. We've got some newbies. That's good, because this first paint in time, I wanted to talk about topics for noobs, for folks who are new to painting. Um, so to start off, I'm going to whip around here and grab some paint. Oh, my paint is so old, you guys. And start off with one of the first questions that folks have when it comes to painting models, which is, what kind of paint do I need, right? Um, most model painting is done with acrylic paints, um, and you can find Vallejo Game Color, Ancient Edition, or Reaper Master Series, kind of getting old edition. Uh, I've also got some of the contrast paints from Games Workshop that I put in dropper bottles because I have a strong preference for dropper bottles that you might notice throughout this stream. Can I just use craft paint from the craft store? Uh, please do not. Why? Um, just for a little bit, my brothers use contrast paints. Contrast paints are real cool. Um, when those came out, did those come out in 2019? Hi, Bottled Monk. Um, 
I was worried. I was like, oh no, did they bottle all of my painting techniques? Crap, now I have to learn how to airbrush models if I want to be cool, don't I? Everything's over. And, and the answer to did they learn how to bottle my technique is not quite. So we're going to bounce around on that. Um, I was talking about craft paints a moment ago. Uh, don't use them. The reason why is paint consists of paint medium, a handful of other chemicals, and the pigment itself, which is usually crushed up rocks and minerals and things. Uh, and the paint that you'll find that is being sold specifically for model painting has a much finer pigment. So if we look at our big beautiful gog here again, you'll see that uh, gog's covered in a lot of fine details, right? You've got the, the scaling on his armor here, you have the spiky spikes on his arm wrap here, you have the little dents and divots in his axe, and if you use a paint that has very large pigment particles, it's going to fill in that gap, and it's going to fill in that detail, and then you're going to have a pretty muddy looking model. So that's, that's one of my few, no, no, you can't cheap out on this topics, is you should get high quality acrylic paint that is intended for modeling. Next big noob topic, what kind of brushes should I use? What kind of brush sizes should I use? Um, and this depends. This is a very, like, are you, are you getting into it, getting into it? Or are you just painting a model? Gog want high quality paint. Exactly. Gog will smash if you muddy up Gog's beautiful details. Just dump the entire thing in paint. I mean... There are a few techniques where, where you do something called a dip and you, you put down the base colors on the model and then you just dip the whole guy in, in this dip wash and then, you know, shake it off really vigorously and then let things settle out. And that's a very, it's a very exciting technique. That's, that's parachuting for me. It's a little bit too to skydiving for me. You're a dip wash. That's right. Your mom's a dip wash. No, no, my mom's a dip, dip wash. I'm sure your mom's lovely. Um, so, mm. yes, yes, attaching. Uh, Sam has pointed out um, a lot of people who use a dip wash uh, attach them to a power drill to shake off the excess paint. I believe that that's because a lot of dips and dip formulas are very thick. They're like, they're like wood, wood treatment thick. Yes. Oh, <laughs> choppy being like, I thought that was just how you'd naturally do it. That just makes perfect sense to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, every technique is better when it uses a power drill. All right. All right. Taken, taken my notes. Um, very cool. But when it comes to brushes, in general, they're after me, man. They're not even on stream. Yeah, absolutely. The power drill is the brush. You know, I actually have something. I can't walk over and get it because I have a camera strapped to my chest. But uh, I have a a drill brush set. And it's a set of brushes that I can attach to my power drill, but it's for cleaning. It's, it's so that I can clean my bathtub in under five minutes. It's so good um, because power drills make things better. But clearly I need to look into power drills for miniatures painting. Like maybe that's how I'll finally get into dry brushing techniques. Uh, lol. All right. The secret to all things is spin the heck out of them. Mm, it seems accurate, seems good. This right here is my daily driver brush. 
This is a Winster and Winster and Newton Series 7 number one brush, and it's made with Kalinsky Sable. Which, uh, why is Kalinsky Sable good? Kalinsky Sable is good because it has strong spring back, and it holds a point very well. So in a paintbrush, what you want, if you're going deep, you want something that has that spring back and that durability, and can actually hold enough paint in in the uh, the cone of the bristles to paint with, right? Um, if you're just doing it to do it, size is all that matters. Um, for Minnie's painting, I recommend using the largest brush at all times that you can feel comfortable with. Because if you use a really small brush, let's see here. Got a whole assortment of things. Here is here is a not great... Uh-oh. Well, I forgot what I said already, so... Uh, kittens. Sorry, everyone. Here is a cheap knockoff 3-0 fine tip round brush. And this guy is real skinny and has a bit of length to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Save your kids. This, uh... Even though I'm trying not to swear on this stream, it's still rated mature. So, uh, yeah, here we go. So this guy's nice and long and thin, and is good for doing lines and small, small details. Uh, and if you're working with a detail brush over a broad surface, you're going to be wasting a lot of your time. You're going to get really bored. Uh, your paint is going to dry on the brush while you're trying to cover the surface. It's just, it's not a good time. Uh, here's, here's an 18-0. Wow, this guy barely shows up, even, even nice and close. Just, it could be in the room right now and you wouldn't know. Just secret. And here's the rinkiest, dinkiest brush that I have. The, the Low Cornell 18 slash 7000. Which is too small for much use. This guy is uh, something that I usually break out when I'm doing eyes. And it's absolutely as small as I'll go. I've heard of some people who are like, oh yeah, I take a cat's whisker and I and I carve, and I cut the end, and then I use the end to do the thing, and it's like... What? That's not me. That's, that's a big waste of our time. Uh, Alright, that's, that's brush talk more or less over with. Next up, paint palettes. If you are using your your typical paint palette like this. This one's a metal one, so it's actually less common. Is this a cider? No, sadly. This is a La Croix. This is a passion fruit La Croix. Give me a dollar, La Croix. She has literally used the cat's whisker before, whereas Walleye says that uh, their partner has literally used it. I think that's exciting that uh, she used the cat's whisker. Even if my drink choice is boring. Honestly, you want me to go knock on my door and uh, have one of my, my roomies get me something boozy? Because <laughs> I've got a, a Smirno Smirnoff red, white, and berry waiting for me. And that's like... Austin described it as like a blue icy pop, but alcoholic. Water that tastes like it has heard the word cider once long ago. Yes. Yeah, um, amongst my friend group, the joke is, La Croix tastes like what, uh, what happens if you bubble the water and then you have somebody shout the flavor name in the next room and then you bottle it. Ah. So this is a metal paint palette. 
I've never used a metal paint palette before and I'm probably not going to this stream unless you guys are like, do it, do it, do it. Um, but my hope for this guy is that it will be easy to clean. Plastic ones are a pain in the butt to clean even though they are a dollar a piece and if you are just dipping your toe in the water, get a plastic one to start with, no shame. You're, you're not going to enjoy them in the long run if you start to like it. So just think of them as a, a toll to get onto the on-ramp of painting. It's very, very simple. And then dip your toe in the paint and then put your toe on the model. This is the most avant-garde painting stream ever. Tiny Nanomi just coming, spitting fire with ideas. Then there is this guy. I don't know if I'm going to have a good time showing this. Here we go. Speeding down the paint bond. Thanks, Jeff. Um, this guy is a wet palette. So this is a piece of parchment paper over a sponge that has been moistened with water. And these guys are just radical. Um, I had a very bad first experience with a wet palette because they're touchy. They take a lot of careful setup, like I had to wet the parchment paper on both sides moist. Somebody is a Miniac fan. Or they just like it when people say moist, but uh, I've got suspicions. Um, but yeah, you have to moist moisten the parchment paper on both sides so that it doesn't warp. Um, and then you have to lay it down on the sponge, which must be moist uh, as you do so. And then you have to like smooth it out with something. I use a credit card. Um, and then you have to get the bubbles out from between the parchment paper and the sponge itself. And then as you're using it, you have to kind of nurse the sponge a little bit and make sure that it stays moist. Uh, so that uh, it continues doing the thing. <laughs> What's the advantage of this thing? So the thing that makes this great is when you are using any other type of palette, when you're using a regular palette like this guy here, right, your paint is going to be drying from the moment you put it on the palette. And you're going to be working with your model and doing details and racing that paint on the palette as it dries. So there are a few things that you can do to make your paint last longer on the palette. Uh, the primary thing is to add a little water to it, but there are limits to that because of course you only want to dilute the paint so much before you put it on your mini. Um, so what this does is keeps your paint from drying out nearly as fast. And also, like, if you finish your painting session, you put the lid on it, this will keep your paint fresh until, like, the next day, couple of days. It depends on your environment and the quality of your paints. Um, if you're me and most of your paints are from Michigan, it's a little hazardous to do this because uh, Michigan is the place where the mold is. And therefore, my Michigan paints have a little bit of secret mold hiding inside, waiting for their opportunity to uh, grow in my wet palette sponge. So wet palettes are great, but they are a little picky and you do have to be a little careful with them. But you can use a few drops of paint until you're actually finished using that few drops of paint. Um, this can become really critical when you're doing a lot of careful blending of your paint colors, which is something that we might talk about a little bit later during this stream. But, uh, but they are an, an advanced technique. Uh, they are also a bit more expensive. I think one of these guys is between 15 and 20 dollars. Yeah, if the character I'm painting, Tiny Nanomi says, is Moldy the Mold, then I just might want to buy the paint from Michigan. You gotta keep it real, right? Oh, and buy it from the mold place. 
but uh, but yeah, when you use a wet palette, it's very nice, but it's also picky, and I don't expect people to jump on that as their first paint palette. <laughs> Nurgle models with all natural mold. Yes, yeah. yeah. Clearly, I'm just trying to do some next level stuff. Um, honestly, some of the paint that I have in my kit's probably older than I am, because I inherited like a grocery bag full of paints from our old white beard painters at uh, the comic shop, like, ten years ago. More. Oh god. It's been so long. Anyways, in the end we all return to mold indeed. So putting the paint on the mini, now that we've talked about paint palettes and tools. What do we do? What do we do? Uh, I'm gonna grab an example here and just show you step what things look like at the end, really, when you've done a good to decent job. So this is, maybe I gotta go a little further, got a little closer, closer, there we go. This is Anna Never from Anima Tactics with her giant baguette on her back. It's actually a bundle of cloth, but I mean, it looks it looks like a, a baguette. So on the base here, I try to put my basing stuff down first. Now, spoilers, I'm skipping to the end. Wee wee baguette. Uh, I try to put stuff down first that isn't this flocking stuff. Like this grass stuff, this is stuff that you glue on the end with a little super glue. It's so easy. Um, cover this guy while I'm doing not paint things. But these little stones that you see, I tried to glue those down onto the base before I start anything, right? Uh, why do I do it like this? I try to make sure that I have some basing down on the model first, because the very, very first thing that I like to do with a model is prime it. Um, so once you've got a basic idea for your basing, you put it down there, you prime it, like beautiful Gog here, is primed white. Now why would I prime in white? I prime in white because I like the color fidelity that I get. Uh, for the total noobs out there, primer or priming all refers to a particular type of paint that you just put on the model before you start painting. Um, that is a very high adhesion paint. So you put the primer on first, and that's going to be very aggressive and stick to the model very hard. Um, and that way, you can put the gentler paints on top of the primer and they will actually stay on your model instead of just rubbing right off. Um, I don't have any primer within an arm's reach of me. Um, this is where I get cheap. Uh, a lot of people swear by using GW primer only. I'm like, uh, as long as it's supposed to be a fine pigment primer or a high pigment density primer, you're doing fine. So Rust-Oleum makes uh, a 2X Ultra Coat primer, and that's like between 4 and $6, depending on where you buy it. Whereas GW primer is about 15 so go cheap, because it's fine. And get your models primed. When you are priming a model, what I like to do is take a bit of poster tack, and then here we're gonna, we're gonna use this as a pretend example. I poster tack it onto the top of a pop bottle. This isn't a pop bottle, it's a pop can, which is different and inferior, but it's an example. I love armor paint, Army Painter Brush On Primer, says, MJ Cracker. Um, yeah, actually, I do have some of that. Um, I don't, I don't prime in gray very often, because I, I almost never have a reason to do so, but Army Painter makes a gray brush on primer, and that stuff is good. Um, I, I've got to admit, I've got ADD, uh, I don't have a lot of time for prep, so 
when I'm brushing on primer, I'm always worried that I'm going to, you know, squirrel and then miss a big spot. Um, so, if I ever decided to take artistic liberties, like say, decide to paint my Gog Mini with purple skin, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm always taking some kind of artistic choice making thing. Grape Gog, oh, terrible. I would not do that with this. Uh, if you're expecting wild swerves in this stream, I'm, I'm doing classic. I'm going, going OG with the paint scheme for these guys. But you're going to see that I'm going to be making some choices and compromises throughout. Uh, because that's just the nature. Technically, Sam says green can also be grape gog, so that's true. <laughs> uh, prime with Vanta black. Yes, black primer is good for some things. Uh, like I said, white primer gives you the color fidelity. Black primer makes sure that if you miss parts of the model while you're painting, it's not going to stand out. That's, that's the big thing that you get from using black primer. Also, your, your darks are going to look nice and dark, so that's an extremely cool thing to have set up. So for our, our example, when I'm priming, you know, make sure that you shake, shake your primer can for the full 60 seconds. It's boring. It sucks. We all hate it. But once you do that, it's actually mixed, which means that you're not going to get the same kind of speckling and crap. Um, metallics almost always look better when they're primed black. That's probably solidly true. I, I will put my, my expertise weight behind that and just declare, yeah, Chop and Stance is correct. Um, metallics look better primed black. Um, so you see black a lot um, when you're painting big armies. It's a pretty good tactic because you're going to just be slapping on metallics. I wouldn't do non-metallic metal painting techniques for a whole army. I would just grab something silver and go just paint that on for all of the swords or guns or whatever. And I can't remember why I prime gray ever, because I almost never do it. There are reasons. I'm not sure what they are. Um, when you spray primer, one, always prime outdoors. Never, never prime indoors, even with the windows open. You're not fooling anyone, least of all your lungs. So do it out, outside. Do it upwind. Just check first. Um, don't be like me. Take off your watch. <laughs> Have you even primed your minis? Shaking my head. Yeah. Gray is awesome with contrasts. Interesting. Okay. I'll have to play around with gray a little more and see what I can do about it. If I've got models that have really, really swingy color palettes, it'd be fun. Um, for the newbies who are playing with spray paint for the first time, when you are painting your model, you want to have your hand, you know, in your can, about six to eight inches away from the model. Start, I'm going to try to choreograph this, start on one side of the model, spray across it until you've passed it, and then, and once you've, since you've got it attached to a pop can, you can get the low parts, you can get the high parts, you can get the side, you can make sure that his butt is painted. All of these things that are rather important to have primed. It sucks to be halfway through painting a model, especially when you're priming black, for instance, you'll actually notice this, whereas if you're priming white, you'll be like, why is the paint not sticking here? I can't see a problem with what's going on. You, you missed it. Yet The primer didn't hit there. Um, with black, you see it right away, and you're like, oh, time to get the bottle out and try to reach in there with the paintbrush to jam it. So do that carefully. Um, good preparation makes the rest of your model painting go very well. Um, one thing that I always try to make sure I do before I paint is to plan out the colors. For these guys, like, I don't have to worry that much about them. I know what they look like, and I know more or less where the color's going to go. Nice. Uh, 
T Speak says, gray is easy to go light to dark with, so it's my favorite starting point if I'm priming a solid color. I also use Zenithal priming a lot. That's fun. Actually, I've started doing Zenithal priming multiple light coats. Yes, thank you, Sam. It is easy to add primer. It is obnoxious to remove it. Um, if you feel like your primer is going on a little too fast, pull back on the can. Increase the distance. You'll have to do it a little more, but it's always easy to add just a little bit of poof, a little hint of, of Salt Bay primer, and you don't want to have to go strip your mini. So here is, since somebody mentioned it, here is a GOG, because I have a few extra GOGs, and he is Zenithal Highlighted, and it's a little difficult to tell with this camera because it looks so natural, but here, let's get in close and see his axe. So this guy was primed black, and then I used an airbrush with white ink because white ink produces a finer spray, so it looks a bit nicer. Um, when I try this with just white primer on top of black, it looks a little speckled, which can be really a fun effect if you intend for it, but if you don't, you don't want it. So, whoop, camera's kind of slow. Here we go. So one side of his axe handle is quite white, and the other one is quite dark. It's quite black. Uh, why would I do Xenophil highlighting? What it does is it does some of the blending for you ahead of time, and you can see the lights and darks. And it's, uh, it's a pretty fast technique. It looks super interesting and advanced, but it take, it's an extra five minutes of primer uh, behavior, of primer activity. And for that, you get this kind of an effect, and it looks super. Uh, I've used it before. I've seen some other people use it for certain speed painting. Uh, if you are into doing washes, if you have an airbrush, I spent $20 to get, like an Amazon special airbrush for for like decorating cakes and it's just this this tiny compressor lump it's it's smaller than a pop can is the compressor with a little airbrush attachment and I'm like cool I will use this two times a year and I'm satisfied with my investment um, if you don't have an airbrush go ahead and use a white primer spray paint but uh, I would recommend more distance between the can and the object that you're priming, and I would recommend using it when the can is still fresh and being more careful even about shaking. Rattle can primers work for Zenithal if you're light-handed with it, but yeah. Um, another thing to be careful with if you're using light ink, um, light ink tends to be a bit more delicate than acrylic paint, so until you've got a few layers of something dried on it, you want to go really gently on that. Um, or you can spray some clear sealant on it, just a little, little bit, uh, to make sure that it sticks and doesn't rub off. But I've never been that precious about it. Uh, let's see. Next up in the preparation list, uh, we've talked a little bit about planning the colors. Um, sticking the mini onto something that you can grip. So I, I have a lot of poster tack that I keep around specifically so that I can put a mini onto a bottle cap and then touch the bottle cap and hold that instead of having my grimy mitts on the model itself. Um, this is a technique that I picked up pretty early in my painting career. Uh, GW, aka Citadel or Citadel Paints, makes these guys, these painting handles, they rule Nobody has paid me to say this. They are just amazing. They are expensive, but um, if you like the hobby, if you really love painting, then these guys are your guys. Uh, and with that, folks, I have two of these painting handles. Who should I start painting today? Who, who should I do? I've got 
I've got these folks here. I've got Getcha Gogs, Getcha Zats, I Getcha, Getcha Deirdres, and your Fionas, and your Eves, and your Gerkies. Who we got? Who we gonna paint? We've seen a lot of Gog already. That's fair. He's a great example guy. Gerky, all right. We've got somebody highly affirmative for Gerky. Zot, all right. Oh, Eve. Oh, uh oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back on my selections and see how more of the votes come out. Say words, folks. And by words, I mean names. Mm, okay, we got we got two votes for Gerky. So Gerky's still in the running. We've got two votes for Eve. All right. Words can't do a poll. Um, I'm I'm dumb and I'm bad at uh, Twitch bots, so no, I am too weak to do a poll. <laughs> initiative bag selection. That's smart. Man, my initiative bag's all the way over there. Let's see if I can reach it. Here we go. It's the interactive component. Cork or maybe the action component. Nope. Nope, this isn't happening. Ugh, all right. Yeah, turn to the bag. Ugh. All right, well, I think that the votes have panned out, so I'm happy to see somebody vote for Fiona, though. Oh, now there's a vote for Zot. All right, vote change to Gerky. Uh, all right, then that means we do Zot and Gerky. That's cool. That is actually pretty handy for me for a reason that will become known soon. Let's see here. So this paint handle has a, a series of little grabby portions. You actually look at it from this angle. It's a little tough to see, but they the edges actually go over like this so that they can grip your model for you. Just gonna... There we go. Zot and Gerky. Ready to paint. R2P. Marvelous. So these guys... Uh, why am I happy that I'm going to be painting these guys first? I'm going to be painting these guys first, and it makes me happy because they both have a lot of green on their models, which means that I can use paint across each model. And it saves some time, makes this all more efficient. And I can hold them at any angle on these paint handles that I need to, which is good, because sometimes you need to really get in there. It's also time for me to put on my reading glasses. It's another newbie principle that I want to share. Is that eyedroppers of water? Yes. So I'm using the eyedropper to add water to the sponge of the wet palette so that things go smoothly. Uh, And every time you go to paint, uh, make sure you're painting in some place that's comfortable for you and that you have things ready to hand before you begin. If you're in the middle of something and you don't have, say, paper towel handy, you're going to be quite sad uh, if you need it instantly because you spilled paint somewhere. Uh, put something down on your surface before you paint. Uh, you can't see it here, but I've put down a very dark towel that I don't care about. Old lady mo engaged, yeah. Yeah, I've been using these reading glasses since I was 22 to paint models with. I get so focused when I paint a model that I can get a lot of eye strain. And it sucks. There we go, we're gonna... Where do I... Where am I naturally holding the model when I want to look at it really close? Here we go. All right. So things that you want to make sure you have on your station before you get started. Rinse water, your brushes, your palettes, your paper towels, your minis. Uh, cover your workspace with something disposable. And make sure 
that you are actually ready before you start. So let's see here. Actually got references for Zot and Gurky. Zot's got a very very dark green robe. I can actually compare it to this guy here. Mm. It's out of the light for you guys, but for me it's kind of in the light still. Let's, let's lean forward. Let's see if that helps. That's about where it's focused to. Cool. So Zant's got a very dark green robe. And Gurky has sort of a regular green cloak, right? So I'm going to be able to use Zot's darks to set down Gurky's darkest cloak colors. And that's going to go down very nicely. Uh, you might notice Here is the prototype Zot that we had made for Gen Con of 2019, and here's a prototype Zot that we made for this year. Um, the new prototype is significantly larger, which is quite great. Uh, it means that I'm not going to cry nearly as much when I have to paint their eyes. And it just means that a lot of the details have a little bit of breathing room. It's a lot more fun to use. And it means that the bits aren't going to uh, be quite as delicate, especially in the finished product. So we're very happy that we had a chance to make this smaller prototype first, because that let us know, oh, we need to scale up. We need to get big. Um, really just try to push it. So let's see here. I'm going to take some Verde Oscuro, dark green. And black and brown's a bit too dark. Where's my corner? Mm, and then you are good. Mm -hmm. Special wash. Some of you might be thinking also, as I've shown off these guys, why why did these guys have this? coloring on them. What's going on with that? So my first step for models after I've gotten them primed is I give them a detail wash that I cook up myself. And this detail wash has a very faded old formula written on the bottle. I promise I can probably read it. Yeah, 10 parts H2O, 10 parts flow, 60 parts glaze medium, four parts black and brown, one part walnut brown. And this wash I just splash all over the model before I get started so that I can see the details. I can see the cracks, I can see kind of the general shading and where the paint flowed, and that's going to lead me down my merry way when I go through and paint the whole model. My whole technique is largely Take paint, thin it, and make it more transparent. Use that transparency to make the layering go better. And build up from dark to light. No matter what other kinds of painting techniques you're using, since you're using acrylic paint, you're going to want to take a dark paint first. And use that as the base. Ooh, lovely. Look at look at this guy. The mold. It's growing. It's not, it's just dried paint, but I think with the green and our mold jokes earlier, it's just funny. And don't be afraid of a little bit of dried paint on your bottle ends. It's fine. Very green. A little bit of brown, black and brown. Oh, Dead Aussie Gamer, hello! Welcome! 
I've, I've gotten through quite a few little beginner topics of, hey, what kind of paint do you want if you're painting models, and what kind of this and that and the other thing. And now I'm actually getting down to business and putting a brush in my mouth. Now you know it's serious. It's not easy to show you here. I'm, gonna, I'm blending the paint on the palette. You can see it kind of wick towards itself on the surface. And that's not really dark enough for the start of Zod and his robe. So I think a drop of wash on that is not enough, and I'm going to have to actually hit it with walnut brown. Ah! Jeff, you've just got good timing! So let's see here. In fact, I'm going to try and show the real action here again. Put a drop of blackened brown next to my intended color for Zot. I'm trying not to tilt the palette too much because uh, you might not be able to see it too easily. It's going to want to dribble down. And just blend them together. And you might be thinking, why is Jen always blending dark colors with very dark browns? Uh, there we go. That's the base for Zot's robes that I really want. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Clean the brush off. I'm cleaning the brush off for an important reason that I will explain in just a second. So, let's see. Your paintbrush is important and its life is important. And one way to shorten its life is to let paint get past this point just about when it's very close to this metal part, which I believe is called the ferrule. Uh, if paint gets into the ferrule and dries, that will just wreck your brush. Um, I can't beat the devil out of tiny paint brushes. Yeah, the, it's too small for the devil to move in. He's like, mm, I'm waiting for something better. Uh, let's see, I actually did bring out something else that you might like for brushes brush cleaner. I used to think that this was an effete BS product that you should not use because that's what soap is for, but in fact this stuff is fantastic. I love it for putting away my brushes for a long period after after some hard painting. Um, this really conditions your brush because your brush is hair. Um, or, you know, if you're using a non-synthetic brush it is. And uh, it actually gets the paint out, which is nice. You can't paint with the metal part of your brush. Oh god, a terrible thing to have to say to anybody. But yeah, children at summer camps definitely need to hear that, Sam. Um, so yes, I clean your brushes religiously and carefully, because uh, when the paint dries on those bristles, you are introducing damage to your brush that isn't quite necessary. In my country, there aren't even summer camps. Tiny, you should emigrate. That's that's the message I'm getting here. So let's see here. All right. So that's going to lean back a little bit because the geometry of this just kind of doesn't work out. I'm gonna try to get this. All right, here we go. So this is about as loaded as I want the paintbrush to be for right now. And I'm going to start just slapping it on. And go back whenever you feel the need. It's a little thicker than I quite want it to be, but meh. It'll be fine. Oh. Ugh. So, oh, the model is way out of. We can't see. Thank you. Sorry. So, so right here, I'm actually having an issue. 
maybe getting a little better as paint gets applied near it. But some of my primer didn't go on super well on Zot. And so you might see a little white speck right here that keeps sort of bubbling up from under the paint. Did Jen purposefully want to show us your hands? My hands are beautiful, y'all. I am just privileging you with my hands. That's the real tea. If you have a little priming error like that, don't panic. Wait it out. See if you can't get uh, paint on nearby surface. And then you'll be able to create a a bridge of paint, kind of a handhold of paint across the world. You might see what I'm doing here with my pinky finger. So there's a secret technique amongst painters. And for folks who are like, I don't have the motor skills. If you want a really stable hand on the model, make sure that your painting hand and your model holding hand are touching in two or three different places. If they aren't touching in at least one place, you're, you're not even going to hit it, right? But if they're touching in three different places, you're going to have a decent time. Ooh, my priming issue on the back of Zot's robe here is even harder going to do a little bit of stuff that I know is going to go down and then I'll show you. In real time, watch what it is like to suffer. Some peels back. I'm learning along with you guys. I'm learning a new skill, and that skill is pointing the camera at the brush. Do we have to go to the black market to buy these hands you speak of? Where can I acquire a painter's hand? Uh, you can't purchase them. You have to make your own. Store-bought is not fine. So for a surface like this where it's resisting the paint, which, by the way, as everyone says, this never happens to me. Uh, this is quite unusual. I swear I'm healthy and a good painter. Uh, just take it slow. Focus on the nearby edges that will take paint. When things go wrong when you're painting minis, it's best to not panic. Oh, Demystics, hey there! It's painting time. Welcome to painting time. Today we are painting Zot and Gurky together. We're doing a little bit of parallel painting. Yep, we have happy little accidents and uh, infuriating little sabotages. Speaking of parallel painting, I don't recommend looking at this right now during the stream, but if you want to see me yak on and on for like 36 pages on how I painted the Gen Con 2019 minis, there you go. It is basically a book with a beginning, middle, and end, and lots of drama including a denouement, uh, all about painting these minis. Hint, the denouement is painting eyes. What did I do to prep these minis? Uh, Demystics, you just joined us on stream. Um, so Zot here has been primed white 
and then I slapped on a detail wash that I make myself to make those details pop. The detail wash is largely just glaze medium. It's basically acrylic paint without any paint in it that uh, reduces the opacity of your paint, as well as some flow improver and water and dark brown together. And that makes it so that, uh, that I can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. track of the camera there, guys. It's armpit. Up here. And over here. Oh, oh, it's getting a little, a little too dry on the model. There we go. Sometimes paint's going to dry on the model and it's not going to want to blend with new paint very well. Ah! Demystic says that uh, they use a Nuln oil on theirs after priming white. Rad. Here we go. Try to center Zot correctly. And let's just try to get this whole sleeve. It's a complicated surface, but it's a small one, so it should go relatively quick, as long as I don't biff it. I'm giving the uh, part of his bottom back robe a little time to just sort of dry and chill out. I'm going to try to hit it again with some paint. Hope that it sticks this time. Remember to put Zot back where the camera is. Honestly, if I was a really galaxy brain genius, I think uh, I'd set up one of my monitors like below, I suppose on top of my printer. That way I could see the, the camera angle that I was showing you guys. There he is, he's looking pretty good. And as you can see, because I've thinned out the green a bit, you can see that detail wash beneath the green, because the green is nice and transparent. And so that makes it uh, a lot easier to get through the shading. So it's just like pushing the fast forward button on getting the shading done. These portions don't love me yet, but I will make them love me with paint. Get on there. All right, we're gonna leave that alone for a minute again. I will say, one thing that I don't like about using a wet palette is on a regular palette, I can pretty easily use the palette as a way to get excess paint off of my brush before I put it onto the model. With a wet palette, you can't quite do that. I haven't had a hard time with that this session so far. Either a tiny bit of white on Zot's sleeve, by a tiny bit of white on Zot's sleeve. Got to really get back in there under that armpit. Cool, look, I got it. So, Demystics, what kind of models do you usually paint? Like, 
like what's what's your favorite line? I know Sam's a big blood bowl guy, but uh, I'm not sure Sam has any physical blood bowl minis. Oh, well, I just got a little bit of green on Zot's, uh, Zot's gold necklace. Call the plea. Oh, now his skin. Everything is ruined. It's all over. Wait, no, it's not. Easy solutions to the problem. Just quickly rinse off your brush. Get it wet with regular water. And kind of massage the paint off. I'm not giving you a very good view. Try it this way. There we go. Kind of. Kind of like that. And that's not going to be perfect, but it's absolutely going to be recoverable. And now it's time to get under his armpit again. His other armpit. A little paint. Try to bring it up the camera. Boom. It's looking pretty good. I want to hit that front again over his knee. Because that's looking a little light compared to everything else now. I think it's kind of okay for this part to be a little light, but there we go. Real art question. Ever taken a sip of your brush water? That is like the realest art question, Choppy, that uh, anybody can ever possibly ask. Have you accidentally drank paint? Uh, to that I have to say, no comment. Yes. Or, no. I think I've gotten to the point where, like, the cup is here, and then I look into it, and I'm like, kittens. Demystic started on 40k like 20 years ago. All right, well now, bro, you got to tell us what your army is. Time to get that collar up in. Oh, the collar, this, uh, this hood, sorry, it's folded up hood, has some resistance. While I joked earlier about how this never happens to me, this isn't normal. I should probably swap my, uh, swap my white primer can out for something new. This is probably a sign that that's at the end of its life. Trying to get in there and not here. Trying to paint the inner of his robe and not his neck green. She could be wet behind the ears, but not green behind the ears. That's a little too much. You might have noticed that I just went in along this line and went very close to this other detail. If you're thoughtful about it and careful, and you've steadied your painting hand, a lot of the time you'll be able to use the contours of the model itself to just take the end of your brush where it needs to go. There we go. So there's, there's how Zot's looking right now with the green of his robe. Let's, let's check the back here real quick. I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't want to put more of the darkest paint color down here on Zot's robe while I'm waiting for for that primer resistance to fade away. Oh, Jeff's Jeff's coming after me. 
Aren't you drinking your paint water every time you put your brush in your mouth? <laughs> kind of. It's different though. It's, uh, it's a matter of scale. Like a lot of things. I make sure my brush and my, oh, pardon me. Uh, D Mystics has a painted Ultramarines army. Cool. Uh, a Nib Eldar army. Random stuff. Mm hmm. Second Ed Necron army. I think I have a unit of like the basic, basic Necrons. Because they're just such cool skeleton models. It's like, do I want to have a bunch of techno skeletons? Uh, yeah. They're just amazing looking. Uh, T Speaks says, I make sure my beverage drink has a lid or at least a straw so that the paint cup has is the only open cup on my desk. That's smart. That's, uh, that's thinking with your brain meat right there. Keeps the brush out of his beverage too. Smart. Brush licking is not a crime. There is nothing that is more efficient and materially correct to get the point back on your brush than sticking it in your mouth and rolling it against your tongue. That is what I'm doing every time I put it in is spinning it against my tongue so that my, my moist tongue can gently roll the point back onto the end of my brush. So uh, just remember kids, you're going to eat a little paint before you die. <laughs> I have disgusted my boss. I, I'm feeling good. Banner day. All right. But now I'm going to see well, Zot's... Well, layer one of Zot's robe is drying. It's time to blend up a color. And that's going to be Gerky's cloak's base color. I'm going to put down some of this green. Well, before I do that, I'm going to look at some of my other greens over here and lift up things. Goblin green. Right here, this guy. Gosh, this paint looks practically new, and it feels kind of new, too. It still mixes nice and quickly. That's nice. And then uh, this, this is an old paint. German uniform. Thanks, guys. It's a good gray-green. Paint shaky cam. Yes, so if you are desperate to not lick your brush, um, I recommend moistened paper towel. Then just roll it on that. Be careful. You should be fine. Well, there we go. We have a handful of nice greens. Oh, and Oliva Medio. Medium olive. This guy is about as old as the other. Valandra is just back today. Can't wait to get my hands on all of this. Exciting! Thank you so much for your support. Oh, D Mystic says, I 3D printed a bunch of pegboard paint racks. Best investment. Oh, man. And Sam says, uh, figures for five Blood Bowl races that swap around for like 12 different rosters. Nice. My elves and trees can play wood, dark, high, and pro elves. You have five Blood Bowl races. Four of them are elves. <laughs> Only one of them is assembled. None of them are even primed. Um... Yeah, so one of the one of the little things that I want to leave everybody with before we close today is um, even if you're not good at painting, even if you slap something together as lazily as you could and then put it on a table, like one painted mini is worth five unpainted minis. And that's certainly at least the ratio of painted to unpainted that I own. Uh, <laughs> your pile of shame will chase you forever. But uh, even, even your garbage painted minis will make you happen. Oh, any chance there's a pub crawl mini to paint some stream? 
RTI 8 has to get here. Um, I, I don't have any copies in my hand, so maybe is, uh, is my answer to that. Um, the Mystics wants to get all of their Power Rangers print, right? Yeah, the pile of shame gets gets bad. I have I have many a box that is so sad. So let's see. Here is here is one of my minis that I'm not particularly happy with. Cause cause why am I not happy with it? I'm not 100% sure. T3H Jinji says, I just paint random minis for no reason other than my own pleasure. Even I have a pile of shame. It's small, but it's there. I, I agree with you, yeah. That's, I don't, I don't play any war games, but I love painting models and I love doing terrain and stuff like that. And it just makes me happy. So don't, don't beat up yourself for fun things that you haven't done because you were doing other fun things, you know? Um, and if your mini isn't quite up to your standard, but it still communicates something, like, this is a dwarf. Uh, oh, yeah. This is a dwarf. He's wearing armor. He has a blue belt. He has a hammer. He's wearing a lot of leather. Um, if you look really close... can kind of tell that he's got a little bit of a pink on the end of his nose. He's been working hard, his blood's pumping, and that's all you need to know. Um, here's a mini where it's, it's unfinished. I'm really happy with the cloak and how that's turned out. But I didn't plan before I started painting this mini, so... So there's that red loincloth flap and it's next to this kind of yellowish leather that I'm unhappy with and it's, that's also next to what this is is uh, this right here is more flap? I honestly have no idea what it is. I know that it's a part of her clothing and that's it. But I made that green because it looks like a leaf, right? Uh, and I just hate it. Honestly, I, I just wish that I didn't. Um, but I don't know what else I would do. So because I didn't plan out my colors very well, I started really disliking the way the model looks at different angles. And then I kind of gave up. Uh, but even a half-painted mini like this makes me happier than something that's just sort of sitting there not doing anything. So even even an ugly baby is still your baby, and you're gonna love it. So I would say just jump on it and give it a try. Don't jump on infants. Uh, let's see. So back down to the paint palette here, I think. I think I'm gonna try a little olive medium. A little oliva medio. <laughs> yeah, public service announcement. Don't jump on infants. Oh, it's another it's another sad little dropper bottle end. Just give it give it the spin. Oh boy, the telephone game has begun. Jen Kitzman, what's your opinion on infants? Um they're they're good, and they should be kept safe? That isn't what you said the other day on Twitch. Oh no. Kittens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh, wait, maybe it's... It's a little stuck. I think my favorite mini at the moment is a treasure chest mimic I painted during a paint night I organized with my friends. He's purple with a bright blue tongue. That sounds wonderful. Uh, I definitely did not have a plan when I started painting him. Like many things in art, sometimes you can fly blind and you're going to create something fabulous. Okay. This guy is very... This guy is very clogged, 
and I don't have a needle here to unclog him with, or a paper clip. Oh, do I sacrifice my mechanical pencil to this? All right, buddy, time to take one for the team. We'll see if that even worked. Sometimes your old paints are going to be a little clogged, and that's going to be a little sad. But most of the time you can get that fixed with uh, a sewing needle or a push pin or a paper clip. Oh man, my roomie's ordering from Chewy Foos. I give up on this one. Pardon me while I respond to my roomie, who is a good and kind person who wants to make sure that I eat. All caps, yes, I want that. Yes, I'm going to get a tuna bowl, and it's going to be incredible. Chewy Foo's is a uh, fusion restaurant, the fusion specifically being painting works up an appetite. Absolutely. As soon as you sit down painting, you start thinking about things you could be eating, things you could be drinking. Focus. Uh, here we go. Oh, Oh, look at that dried paint. Now, this is actually preferable to the previous one because I bet that this dried paint created a nice seal that means it's nice and yep it is not clogged underneath. Hooray! I put paint on the wet palette. Hashtag blessed. I love it. So here we go. It's time to blend some paint. So I'm going to take some of Zot's very dark paint. And you see how this little section here is still nice and moist. Blend it in with this. If I was using a regular palette, this would be dry already, just completely. And that is actually much too light. But I like kind of where it's going. It's time to use my magic dark wash again. Why am I using my magic dark wash? Because it already contains a lot of flow and a lot of paint medium. So it's translucent as well as conducive to my paint style to add it. And that way I don't have to add those things separately. There's that black and brown. And I think I'm gonna take some of this nice dark green that I used originally. I'm gonna put it nearby on the paint palette. I'm gonna pick this up again so that you can see the action. Live Paint Mix Can 2021. Just so gonna get that on my brush, drag that in here, and mix it around until I'm pleased with it. When you're mixing paints, you can go a lot of different ways. And paints can surprise you. Let's see. And just, just a little more of this. If this doesn't bring me where I want it to be, gonna have to jump. And by jump, I mean start creating a new spot on my palette with the paint that I've been mixing a lot of. Try to get as much paint off the brush and onto the palette as I can before I rinse. 
And I'm going to try and get more of this into more of that. There we go. Hopefully I don't run out of it before I'm done. And because I'm nervous about running out, I'm just going to jump onto Gerky's cloak here. Is there a general rule about the relationship between the color you see when it's wet on the palette and the color it ends up with being dry on the mini? Um, usually the relationship is pretty direct. It's going to be a little bit lighter on the mini once it's dry, but usually Usually it's fairly WYSIWYG. Um, you'll notice that my wet palette has a bright yellow sponge beneath it, and that complicates things a little bit for me. It's actually one of the other reasons why I didn't want to jump onto wet palettes for a long time. It's because I was worried about not seeing the colors accurately when I was mixing them. Uh, but it's turned out all right in the end. I think for the most part I don't need that level of accuracy as long as I know what I'm painting and painting from. What do I mean when I say that? Uh, right now I'm starting fresh on Gerke's cloak here so I don't have to be too worried about matching what I painted on his cloak last time, because this is the first time. Uh, if I stopped right now and came back a week later, I would have to try to recreate that paint color. And that's where I would start to get nervous. Try to sort of get it on here. see right now how having the painting handle is really helping me out. So I can hold it whatever angle I need to, even upside down, to reach the parts of the model that I really want to hit. And I'm going to try to move up. There we go. Bit of green on Gerke's arm that I don't want. So let's see if I can fix that. Not, not perfectly, but it's not terrible. So this part around Gerke's neck here that I haven't touched with this cloak paint. It's actually a scarf. It's a lighter green color. So I'm going to come back here significantly later and try to hit that with a all new green color so that they look distinct. In general, when you are putting colors on a mini, there are a couple of guidelines that you want to follow. And the first one is that you kind of don't want to have the same colors next to each other. Because on the model especially, it's uh, it makes those two surfaces look like the same surface to the eye. Which isn't helpful if uh, that means that somebody's pants and somebody's belt are the same brown, then, uh, then you've just lost a detail. Hmm. All right. We've hit one point where the paint handle actually is uh, getting in my way instead of helping me. And that is the back side of Gerke's cloak. Pull it off of that for a second and get in 
very close and around upside down. Gerke's base is a strategically placed obstruction right now. It's like one of those scenes from Austin Powers where he is just full on naked. Somebody's holding an eggplant in the foreground to save us all from that. There we go. The very back of his cloak. Honestly, I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab some of the very dark Zot color to slap back there, because I don't want to have to go back here very often again. And if you want to ignore a section of a model that's uh, supposed to be in shadow, it's supposed to be dark, and you're not going to see it very often, Dark is good. Dark will hide your shame. Sorry about the hand cam there, Domestics. Sometimes it can't be helped. There we go, we put it back on the thing. And get the water. Moisten this part up. I think I'm just gonna hit this inside again. Blend this part in a little bit here. There we go. That's looking pretty likable. And you can actually see the back of his cloak now. It's looking a little splodgy still. It's kind of in need of some blending, but is that an SNES style Switch Pro controller? It is uh, an 8 bit do SNES styled Switch Pro controller, yes. Absolutely. Phew. All right, time to crack open another lacrosse. Give me a dollar, lacrosse. All right, so let's see here. Right here on the wet palette, we've got three different shades of green. One to start. Zot's cloak, one to start Gerke's cloak, one that's just a little bit lighter than what I wanted to start Gerke's cloak at. So I think I'm going to put a drop of brown wash into what I started Gerke's cloak with. Give it a little life extension. Then I'm going to hit Zot's cloak once more. Check out my outline here. It's the list of things that I told myself to say. Yeah, no, I'm pretty much hitting my hitting my marks here. I'm pleased with that. Guys, let me know if you have any questions or thoughts about painting. Um, time to go over Zots. So this is kind of the mid-range color. So I'm not trying to be cautious about where I put it. I'm going to trust the darks to sort of... whatever the opposite of shine is, they'll do that through this mid-tone. which is going to make the dark and light difference a lot subtler, but do not panic. You want this because uh, when you go to highlight, that's when things really start to come together.
So Jen, how can I do painting like this if I don't have fancy mixing medium? Uh, just use water. You already have it. There's already water in your paint. There's no shame in just using water. Uh, the only warning that I would have for you is to go very easy on it. Because uh, your paint only has so much capacity to have water added to it. If you add too much water, your paint will lose cohesion. It won't be, it won't feel, it won't be one thing anymore, right? It will want to break apart on your model. It won't stick to your model anymore. Uh, it won't be thick enough to, uh, to adhere. And then you'll be in a sad place as you try to make your model. But if you take it slow when you're mixing in water, then you should be fine. Adding water to your paint will also mean that it dries slower, which can be a good thing and a bad thing depending on what you're trying to do. I'm trying to bring Zod up here. And water should thin your paints enough so that you can use layering techniques like this. Right now my paintbrush is doing something that I don't like be very difficult to see if I turn it just right. Here you can kind of see how it's forking at the tip. And that is my point coming apart a little bit. So it's time to wash my brush very thoroughly. Off into wash water. Or the wash water if you're uh, from Pennsylvania I think. bit of paint up next to my ferrule here, which you can kind of push out if you get it early with your fingernail. I'm definitely going to hit this guy with some of that brush soap that I showed off earlier. really love when I'm painting like 10 models for a squad in a batch, finish an annoying detail, put all of my colors away, and then BAM! Forgot one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think in the painting saga, I've, I've done that before, absolutely. That's, when you're painting parallel, you're gonna save a lot of time and effort, but you're probably gonna forget some detail. Um, so definitely going in there and double checking on it is important. Well, here's how, here's how Zot's looking after letting that mid-tone coat dry a bit. And if we compare Zot to Gurky here, I'm going to try to get the light right. There we go. So Gurky's looks a bit splotchy and like the transitions are kind of haphazard. And you can see that Zot's are already kind of coming together and looking more gradual and natural. And that's definitely what you want. And I think the next time I hit Zot's robe, I'd probably be going for some highlights, and I'd try to be careful about making sure that I was hitting the raised up parts that are meant to be lighter alone, and not touching the dark low lights. And now, for Gurky here, I think I'm going to try to bring this color of paint up a little bit. I also think it's time to put a little water on my sponge. 
Now my paint water is getting exciting. Also, behold my adorable MSU double shot mug that I use for all of my paint water. However, I didn't remember to bring a needle, but I did remember to have a bottle of water handy. So that I didn't have to get up and get more. And I remembered to have a ditch bucket. Change your paint water. Change your paint water when you change paint colors. Change your paint water when it gets too saturated to reliably use. And don't put paint water in your uh, wet palette sponge. You don't want everything that you put on the wet palette to start taking up those colors. If you are following at home with a regular old not wet palette, then don't worry, do what you want. Put your paint water in your friend's wet palette. Screw that guy. And to paint up. Here's some good old goblin green. Gurky's a halfling. But I'm sure it's the same difference. Demystics, I keep a gallon of distilled water on the floor. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no, the worst outcome. This is a disaster. I'm shocked and terrified. But first, before I cry up to the heavens and ask the gods why, I'm just gonna take some of it and put it on my wet palette. <laughs> Sam understands my pain. No! Yeah, I've had this happen before. Um, gonna have to put this guy back together and take care of him another time when I've got my needle nose pliers. That's the only solution. You're gonna have to pop the nozzle. What what are you seeing? If you don't if you've never seen that before, you don't know. So this part of the paint bottle is separate from this part and is inserted into it. It's a little difficult to see the rim, but that part got stuck in this while the paint was just sort of chilling in my paint box. And so uh, now I've got to unmarry them and clean it off and then jam it back into the actual paint bottle sucks to be me, but not as much as it could. There we go. Here's, here's some color that I like. Just brighten her up on the top, dim down near the bottom. Hmm. I think I'm going to hit it with some of this. This is P3 Paints Mixing Medium. I'm a little nervous about how opaque this paint is, and I want to make it more translucent, so get get on the... Oh my god, it's so, it's so thick. Is that just dried stuff? Oh lord. Y'all, I'm on an adventure here with this stuff. Here, let me show it to you. It's like a glob of wood glue throw everything away and make Jeff buy you a new one. Um, I'm very reluctant to buy new paint, honestly, if I don't feel like I really need to. However, I have bought some new paint. Let me show you some of my newer paint real quick. So you can get away with blending together a lot of colors just on your own. You can start with the primary colors. You can get red and yellow and blue uh, and go hog with those and have a great time. And if you can remember your, your mixing formulas, you're probably going to be fine. I would recommend getting 
two or three browns because it's actually really hard to accurately mix brown. Um, and then purples. Buy purples. If you're going to use purples, buy them. Don't mix purples. Mixing purples is just a ripping pain in the ass. Uh, I mean kittens. Uh, God, I was so close. I have 20 more minutes to not swear in. I almost made it. So these guys are great. Um, Master Series Paint is, I believe, a Reaper Paints product. And they sell them in, like, blending trios. So you get three colors of paint that are close to each other and are easy to blend up and together. And they're quite good. Um, Master Series Paint H. D high density pigment. This is, this is the good stuff right here. Uh, gem purple. I believe that this is a more translucent purple, which is nice for heating up a, another purple that you've blended without adding to its opacity a whole lot. But uh, yeah, buy purples. You might also want to buy some greens, but you don't have to buy every single paint color that exists to have a good, solid paint collection. Rant over. Oh, also yellow. Um, buy at least a couple. And most yellow paints aren't going to be super good. Uh, uh, P3 Paints is yellow, however. Very, very good paint. What is, what is bad about most yellow paints? Most yellow paints have terrible coverage and don't have the opacity that they need. So they blend poorly and they get lost in whatever you're painting. So I highly recommend shopping around carefully for your yellow paint. I know it works for me, uh, but those are going to betray you a little bit. Now the mid-tone goes on to Gertie's cloak. Oh, yes. Yes, good. It is difficult to see through the camera, but the colors are just smoothing out very, very nicely. Once again, if you missed me yammering about this earlier in the thread. If you are worried about the stability of your hand and your paintbrush tip, make sure that your hand that's holding the model and your hand that's holding the brush are touching in three different places. And you will get all kinds of stability just from that alone. So if your hands are touching, then they are shaking equally in relation to each other. And then you can actually put the paint on the mini without having to freak out. That looks fine, so it doesn't quite matter. If it looks good, it doesn't matter. Put that on a t-shirt. Let's get that inside cloak here a little bit. Sorry that I'm not going to be able to fire off the camera angle, because I'm not going to do this blind for you, but I am going to try to make this not 100% hand cam. Hmm. It's difficult to see, but there's a little bit of cloak under his armpit that looks like I missed earlier. Oh, D-Mystic says, uh, brown under yellow and red. Yeah. Yeah, doing a layer of that. Um, another color that looks really good if you put a layer of red under it first is gold. Uh, that is a helpful trick that I learned from my mother, actually. Um, 
because she likes Victorian restoration and chintzy gold paint on things and home decorating. And uh, there you go. Nuggets of wisdom from unlikely places. Nope, oh, total hand cam. Here we go, try to bring them down. Just trying to get down in there, that hard to hit spot. I'm trying to kind of go dark with it so that I never have to try to get under that armpit again. <sighs> Got them. Precise strikes in the dark, just like Gurgi. Now the cloak is drying a little bit. You can kind of see the splotchiness is tamped down a little bit. This cloak is going to take a bit more loving care and a few more layers to blend up properly than Zot's cloak because Zot's cloak has smaller surfaces, which are a little bit easier to go over. So now I can just take that Gerke's Mint Tone and try using it as Zot's first highlight tone. Here's where we start to get fiddly. Just coat those light surfaces. Make sure that I'm not giving you a hand cam. Shoop. 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 Trying to get sort of this part of his feet. Okay, this part. This here. I kind of didn't want to get it right here-ish, but I think it's going to work out okay. I think that once it's dried, it's going to look much more subtle than I fear. Get a little more paint for the brush and go over so it's me here. Part of his foot. This guy. And then this back portion that was so resistant to paint earlier. Let's see if I can't start redeeming it a little bit with a brush. And you know, most of the time when you're painting a mini, what you're really trying to do is follow the model and do what the shape of the model is really telling you to do. So the sculptor of the model is really making your job easier when they sculpt a good mini. New question, what is the goal here? Adding highlights with how we would in an actual 2D image of Zot? Not, not quite. Um, I think that that is a good signpost to help you. But the goal here, in my opinion, when you're painting a mini is to make the mini look like itself. Uh, Jen, that sounds like a bunch of artsy fartsy BS. What, what are you even talking about? You are trying to make the shape of the model visible with your technique and your paint and sometimes trying to blend it the same way you would a 2D image is going to do that. But you're probably not going to use 2D techniques to do it. And sometimes the 2D techniques aren't going to help you very much in 3D. However, they are an extremely strong starting point. And if you are experienced in 2D art, if you've done this before and you're like, well, yeah, you blend up the highlights, duh. Um, 
don't let what I just said shake your confidence. Go for it. Experience what it is like you will probably just ease right into it if you're familiar. And you'll be like, oh yeah, like a caterpillar asked how it walks. I didn't even notice that I was doing something different. But yeah, the, the goal here is to add highlights and make sure that the midtones don't look like garbage. and help the model come together. In a well-sculpted mini, you're not going to have to fake a whole lot, and you're not going to have to, you know, carefully make sure that the highlights go where you think that they would logically go. Um, in a mini that's not sculpted in particularly good detail, you're probably just going to have to make some choices and follow through with them. And that's where having a foundation of good 2D techniques is really going to help you. Because you'll be like, okay, cool, so, you know, this horse's flank doesn't actually have any muscles sculpted onto it. So, uh, this few is going here, and this other few is going right here next to it. And I'm going to blend it up this way to make it look like it's sweating a little bit, and then then you look like a freaking genius. Oh man, a Jeff cam. I would not hate a Jeff cam. But, uh, but because this is chill time paint stream, I don't, I do not invite bagging. Exactly. Maybe, maybe Jeff would be amazing at it. Maybe there's a hidden talent unlock. Where I show Jeff the ropes and he, you know, paints a golden demon winner and is like, what? That's just how I was supposed to do it, right? Because uh, Jeff already does art direction. He, he knows what good art looks like. And absolutely one of the things that you can't buy in a store or learn at school is good taste. And having your own strong taste and preferences and knowing how you see the world is an important part of artistic hoodly do. I'm just going to try to put more there and not less. I think that's going to serve me better in the long run. All right. Yeah, big, big difference between knowing what you like looking at and doing it yourself, though. I fully agreed. Like, I love fashion. I'm not walking around in Pret-a-Porter down the street, like, I don't have the fashion body, I don't have the fashion confidence. But show me models all day, show, wearing interesting, fascinating, highly artistic clothing. I'm super happy. I love it. But there is absolutely a difference between watching and doing. Ooh, oh, it's tough to see, but there are, there are little bits of dried green paint. There's an actor that won a golden demon and a glo golden globe, uh, Source. What's your quote, or link your quotes, etc. I don't believe it until I see it. However, I, I do kind of believe it's plausible enough to me. Ah, all right, well, 
I have spent about two hours painting models. If you heard a door slamming, that was food arriving. So I'm going to wind this down. I'm going to ditch my old paint water. And add a little bit more clean water to my sponge. Will this one also be on YouTube? Yeah, I think so. I think this uh, I think this stream went really well. I think that this is perfectly reasonable to put on YouTube. I will try to take care of that after the stream. Ansel Elgort, Demystics, uh, says he painted a Space Wolf bust like in 2009. That is freaking cool. Oh, a bust. So... Yeah, that fascinates me, because for the model painters who just love painting models, like there are a few limited edition things that get made that are bigger. They're on a different scale. He was in Fault in Our Stars and won his Golden Globe for Baby Driver. Wait, is that the star of Baby Driver? Paints minis? Crap, I'm going to have to start looking this up when I get done with this and get... Uh, everything started. Cool! Well, here is a final progress shot in the minis cam of Zot and Gurky's cloak. The colors on them doesn't don't look very different yet. And they'll probably look pretty similar throughout the finish, but they're going to diverge more as the layers go on. Oh, he didn't win, only nominated. That's good enough for me. I haven't been nominated for either. So, that was super cool. Dropping hot facts. And I will be back next week to drop more hot facts with you. Gotta paint this brush so I'm not gonna cap them. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed having y'all asking questions, learning about model painting, gabbing about what little I know. This was quite delightful, and I'm looking forward to next week's stream. You'll see me again on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, and we will do more model painting and talk more models. Ben Kittens. All right. Thanks a bunch, everyone. Have a great week. Uh-oh. Oh, well, here. Kittens. Uh, still live, have to end stream. Dang. Oh, there's an am I sure I want to stop the stream thing going on. Well, all right. Behold my paint collection in despair, and also goodbye for real now. <laughs>